Diane Stewart Hamlin is a CSL licensed practitioner at an Agape International Spiritual Center licensed practitioner. She is also an attorney and a ministerial student at the Michael Bernard Beckwith School of Ministry. <laughs> Diane believes that service to all mankind is the highest form of being. And she wants us to know that she loves mothering her two daughters who are 12 and 14. With great pleasure, I welcome oh, Diane. Yes. which means I still got stuff to do. And I am so grateful that this iteration of myself is present on the planet. I want to thank Reverend Dr. Raymond for asking me, making a soul call on me to come and serve this community this morning. I'm very grateful to be here with each of you to see the reflection of myself and the beauty and the love of God expressed I love Safi's music and I love when she plays. We do this together a lot. We end up in the same place. I'm speaking, she's making great music, and it's wonderful. So I'm very grateful to be here, to be able to serve this community, to come today and give this talk about adventures in lawful living, because that's kind of how I live my life. It's an adventure, living in the law. Now I say this because there is only really one law, one power, one presence, it is God Almighty, all beauty, all joy. We talk about it in all of these world religions. We talk about it in all of our spiritual ways. We give it a name. We call it God. We call it Buddha. We call it all kinds of things. But it is one, one operating energy that is the source of all, that is. And we know this. We're very clear on this. This is what we believe in centers of spiritual living and in new thought teachings, is that there is only one power, one presence, and it is happening everywhere all the time. So right where you are is the very center of the universe. Right where you are is God itself expressing as you, as an individual expression as you. So there is no separation. And my favorite thing that I came really into awareness of is that oneness is not negotiable. If we say there is one thing, then there is one thing. It's not negotiable. It's not happening in dual existences. It's not happening in any form outside of this one thing, the power, the presence of all. We are all a part of this activity that's happening on the planet. So, you know, in New Thought we talked about, and in CSL teachings, we talked about the law, you know, and there was a time, right, in New Thought where we would say, oh, what's in your consciousness? You know, and that was really a reflection of if we saw something that we thought was negative or we thought wasn't good, we would look at a person and go, ooh, what's in your consciousness? You know, and, and the thing about that is we could do that on a positive level too. Like when you see someone thriving and prospering and growing and unfolding and living a dynamic life, you could go up to them and say, hey, what's in your consciousness? Because I want to experience some of that. Right? I want to participate in that high thinking, that high awareness, that high energy that you're carrying around you that's clearly like emitting from your very beingness because you are in alignment. So the thing about the law, right, is what you put into it, it's like soil. You put a seed in, right, into the soil, and it grows. If you put a rose seed in, a rose plant grows, right? If you put in the um, proper seeds for an oak tree, an oak tree grows. So the question is, right, as human beings, as we express ourselves, we, what do we put into the law so that it can grow? It's not just the seed you plant, but how you nurture it, right? My favorite, there's one law, and then it expresses in so many different ways. For example, we have the law of gravity, right? We know that the law expresses in gravity that if I let go of this pen, it's going to fall. It's just not going to float because we have a law that says gravity says it'll, the earth will pull and hold everything to it, right? So we are all on the planet, thankfully, because of the law of gravity, not floating around. 
But everything that in the world has, in the universe, has law backing it, undergirding it, supporting it. Every single thing. So there's a law of attraction. You start to see what you're looking for. You start to attract what you're looking for, right? So I get up every morning and I am attracting, seeing, looking for health, wholeness, beauty, joy. And everywhere I go, I see health, wholeness, beauty, joy. I remind myself in everything that I'm doing, wherever I go, whatever I see, when I see you, I see God. When, whoever I see, I'm seeing God reflecting back at me. So that's the energy with which I walk into the world every day, looking for beauty, joy, love, and light. So, what's in your consciousness? What are you looking for? Because what you're seeing is what you're looking for. If you start looking for love, you start to find and see love. But if you start looking for things that are not supportive of your existence, you start and you look, not just with your eyes, you're looking with your consciousness. You're looking with your belief. It's not that I am going to wake up and look with my eyes for beauty. It's that consciously I am seeing beauty everywhere I go. I am seeing beauty in Safi's music. I am seeing it. I'm hearing it. I'm feeling it because I'm looking for it with a consciousness that sees it. I'm looking for it with a consciousness that's seeking it. I am seeking this truth. So what am I seeking in my life and how do I activate this? Because many of us are conditioned, right? We're conditioned, all of us, we're conditioned from birth to believe particular things. We're conditioned to believe things like, you know, life is hard and then you die. And so we walk through the world, life is hard, so I'm hard, it's a struggle, every day is a struggle. We tell ourselves things like, I'm in this hustle today, I'm just going to go out here and hustle. Why does it have to be a hustle? Why can't it just be creative? I'm going to go out and create an awesome life and an awesome day. Why does it have to be heavy? Because we've conditioned ourselves. So how do we get out of that conditioning? What can I do? And we do it here all the time in these communities. We sit and speak affirmatively into our lives. So we start to affirmatively, we start to listen, pay attention to what is the thought process that's going on in our heads. What's going on in my mind? What am I looking for, right? Because this is the adventure. Why does it? And you can tell if you're in spiritual practice, you can tell when you're looking for something that doesn't serve your highest good because you feel it energetically. You feel the shift in your body. You feel the energy that's not the constricting energy. You don't feel awake and wide open and expansive. You feel constricted and restricted and unable to move forward or stuck in a thing. And when you start feeling that, you have the gift, right? Because you are created in the image and likeness of all creation. You are created in the image and likeness of God itself. Every aspect, what does that mean? Every aspect of your beingness is the very substance of God itself, right? So the creative genius that creates the universe is the creative genius that is right within you. It is your energy, it is your ability, it is your skill. It is you right now. So you can create energetically the life you truly desire. So how do you do that when you've had all this conditioning that says life is hard and then you die, you know? You gotta struggle, you gotta work hard, you gotta pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you gotta do all these things. How do you transition and become in alignment? Because you know, it's not that you are beseeching for God to give you something, it's not that you're saying the law is gonna teach, give me something. It's that you're saying I'm gonna shift my awareness into alignment with the power and the presence of the law itself, and when I do that, I start to see with a different consciousness. I start to tend to my consciousness and I start to experience expansion. So your soul, what I call it, and one of my favorite teachers, Cheryl Ward said, it's tending to the garden of your soul. So you go in, right, to your soul and you tend to the garden of your soul and you start to tell yourself more expansive things about your life. So your job is not just the job that you're going to because you gotta go work hard so you can get some money because the job is not your source anyway. God is your source. Your job is your opportunity to serve. And so you start looking at it from that place. I am going into this place to serve. You start shifting your consciousness about the way that you show up in the world, the creative genius. With my children, I tell them all the time, you're going to school to learn a particular skill. It's not that you're going to school so you can learn history. It's that you're going to school so you can learn discipline. You can learn how to create. You can learn how to expand. And you can learn about the world that you are in. That's what you're going for. 
So when you shift your awareness to what you're going for, you start to shift the way that you show up. You start to bring your consciousness in alignment with, oh, I have a great job. I'm going in here to serve others. I'm going in here to use my creative genes, to unfold something beautiful, to work with a great group of people. And, I, and you start to really shift your way of showing up. So that way, the job doesn't change, but your consciousness about it changes, and then the way you experience it changes. And it starts to unfold differently for you. So the adventure that you're on is how many ways can I bring myself more and more into alignment with the power and presence of the universe that is right within me? How can I do that? Because the truth that nobody wants to tell us, or they didn't in my structured religion that I came from, is that you have dominion and control over your mind. You have dominion and control over your life. You have dominion and control over how you show up. It is absolutely yours. Now, how do you exercise your dominion and control? Is you shift your consciousness. You shift the way that you engage with others. You unteach yourself the things that were taught to you that keep you smaller than you truly are. You remind yourself every day, I am created in the image and likeness of all that is. I am created in love and beauty. I am a genius. I am able to use my genius to shift the world. Because if that, where we start, if that which created us, created this entire universe, whether you believe it was created out of a big bang, or you believe that there was a thought process that said, let there be. Whatever it is about how we are here, that's the substance that we're created from. That genius that keeps every star up in the sky, every planet rotating on its own axis, every, the sun, the moon, everything going, the tide coming in and out. You're created out of that magnificent genius. So you can tap into the prosperity of the world and recognize that that which created every grain of sand created me and it's within me, it is me, and I can look at my life and multiply every blessing that I have to match every grain of sand upon the planet, because I'm boss like that. I am wonderful like that. I'm amazing like that. I'm incredible like that. So I can choose. I can shift. I can decide and realize that who I am is perfect, whole, and complete. And any area in my life structure that I have to work on to build and unfold and expand is just me building and unfolding and expanding into the greatest expression of myself. It's already there. I already have it. So what do I do? I have a desire and I plant the seed. And when I plant the seed, I know that now I have to tend to the garden. I have to put the consciousness around it the consciousness that I see. So it's like I'm tilling the soil and I'm watering it and I'm putting the nutrients into the soil. It's my consciousness that I'm using to do that. So how? I pray affirmatively about the situation. I, play for, I pray about clarity around what my steps are, that my steps, and I declare absolutely that my steps are ordered in this process. I declare absolutely that every choice that I make is aligned with the power and presence of God itself. That everything that I am doing is an expression of the power and presence of God itself. That every aspect of my beingness is showing up. I declare it every day as I'm tilling the soil, as I'm tending to the garden of my soul. I do it every day, every day and every moment. And when I feel myself forgetting, I stop and say, stop! What do you know? What is the truth that you know? What is the absolute truth that you know? And if you know this truth, then you know the truth is true for the situation and circumstance that you are tilling the soil around. And then what happens, what happens is that all the circumstances and everything comes into place around that seed that you have planted. And everything comes into alignment so that that which you have planted can emerge in its wholeness and its fullness. It emerges based on what you're thinking about it, what energy you have around it, what you believe. So what is my belief? I had to bring all of my beliefs into alignment. Like I had to tell myself, wait a minute, this story that they have about this place they call hell? Like that's not real. Nobody's ever gone and come back to tell us how it is there. We have no proof it's there, but it's a way that, it's a state of mind. 
It's a state of consciousness. An idea that there is a place that I can go and suffer, right? I had to unteach myself that and recognize that there isn't a place that I can go and suffer. There is a way of consciousness that I can choose to suffer, and then I will be walking in that place called hell. But the moment that I start to remind myself that heaven is right where I am, that love is right where I am, that joy is right where I am, that peace is right where I am, that harmony is right where I am, I shift my awareness, my experience, to be exactly that. So the adventure that you're on, that I invite you to be on, is to go into the world, first of all, looking with what I would call fresh fears of eyes. Looking with this idea, start every day, first of all, in thankfulness and gratitude that you're still in the body. Yes, I wake up every morning like, yep, yeah, I'm still here. All right, I still have stuff to do. That means that my mission, my assignment, what I have come into this world to do, to express on the planet, is still unfolding as me. That's why I'm still here. So I am going to make the very best of it. I put my feet on the ground and I give thanks that the ground always rises up to meet my feet. It's never that I swing my feet off the bed and there's nothing there. The ground is always there. I can rely on it. I swing out of bed. I put my feet down and I'm like, all right, let's go. What is my assignment today? My teacher, Michael Bernard Beckwith, always teaches us to ask, why am I here? What is my assignment today? And so I go, what is my purpose? My purpose is to be a change agent. My purpose is to bring beauty and change and assist others to unfold their own magnificent self and their own magnificent expression. And so wherever I go, whether it's in the courthouse or in a center or it's at the school or any community I go, I go with the focused idea that I am here to bring truth to the world. I'm here to bring help and assistance and to walk with others as they unfold their greatness. You bring that, you bring your energy, you shift your focus, you pay attention to what you have come to do. And then you step into it with grace and ease and a consciousness of knowing that everything that is necessary for you to do what you are here to do is already within you. All you have to do now is tend to it. So you pray and you sit in stillness. You do meditation and you align your awareness, you align your thoughts, you align your consciousness with the law itself because the law is here to serve you. And when you stand in that truth and that knowing that this law is here to serve me, everything that is necessary for the unfoldment of my highest good and all that I am here to do is already given, the law is here, all you do now is keep yourself aligned. And that is, the, that is the adventure, keeping yourself aligned, not getting distracted by the person in traffic that cuts you off, you know, not you know, being, going down the road, being mad because somebody got before you in line. You gotta keep going, you gotta keep, not being mad because you didn't win the case, you gotta keep going. And the practice and the adventure is, I keep realigning my consciousness to know that the law is here to serve me for my highest and best good. And I declare it as so every single day. You declare it as so every single day in your life. You get up, give thanks, and get on your journey, get on your adventure, and live your life fully, wholly, and completely, because that is the truth of why you're here, is that you're here to be full out, full on, fully expanded, and to do your part in unfolding the evolution of mankind. That's what you're here for, so I invite you to join me in the journey, join me in the lawful living and the adventure itself. It is good, it is rich, it is a lot of fun, and it's way better than sitting on the sidelines watching other people do their thing. <laughs> so as we take a moment now just to go into prayer, to just give thanks, let us just center ourselves and remind ourselves who and what we truly are. So how good it is and how grateful I am to know that the power and presence of the spirit, the God, the universe itself is right where I am right now. That power, that presence that has every grain of sand right where it is, every drop of water in the oceans and the lakes and the rivers on the planet, every planet, every star in the universe that continues to unfold and expand upon itself, that is the power and presence from which I am created, that I am aligned with, and I am one with what is true absolutely for me, because oneness is non-negotiable, is that it is true for each and every person here, on the live stream, on the Facebook page, 
Everywhere we go, there is the oneness, full power presence of God upon its own self. And how good it is to know that each one here takes this truth, takes this knowing out into the world and shares it so freely just by the way they shine their light that each person that we come into is forever changed. Everywhere we go, we are change agents. We are creating an amazing planet together and a continued unfoldment of the power and presence of God itself as each person, each thing, Everywhere we go, God is, and we are, and we stand in that truth, we stand in that knowing as we bring this presence, the awareness of the presence out into the world that everyone becomes really in tune with the awareness that they too stand in the presence of God, that they too are God expressed. Right here and right now, we shine our lights powerfully so that everyone around us has permission to shine their own light. We give thanks for the life that we continue to be on journey with, the ways in which we get to show up in the world, and we bless everyone everywhere we go with the brightness and the truth and the fullness of who and what we are. For this I'm giving thanks as I release these words into the law, knowing that it is already done because it has already been spoken, and we know that it is so, and together we say, and so it is.